Y'all, welcome. We are going to basically do a recap over all the properties and, you know, theorems that we've discussed in Unit 6. So, I've got types of quadrilaterals here. I want to begin with a parallelogram, okay? So, parallelogram, um, that's the basic thing. If you understand what, the par what a parallelogram is, you're going to understand a lot of the things that we have talked about, okay? Parallelogram basic properties opposite sides are parallel so you can see that with a parallelogram first of all i want to go ahead and make sure that we understand a parallelogram is a quadrilateral four sides right with a parallelogram it has all these properties here okay so opposite sides parallel if i were to look at this quadrilateral you can see okay well arrow here arrow here that means that these sides here are parallel and then i got two arrows here two arrows here these sides are parallel. So what does that mean? We have these opposite sides parallel. And those same sides, okay? Those opposite sides are congruent. One tick mark here, one tick mark here, two tick marks here, two tick marks here, okay? Know that the opposite angles are congruent. So A and C are congruent, B and D are congruent, okay? And then the, the diagonals bisect each other. So here are my diagonals. They intersect. Remember, the diagonals intersect at a midpoint. So if I create a midpoint here, you can see that E is the midpoint. E is the midpoint of DB. That means that I draw one tick mark here and one tick mark here. Therefore, these two segments are congruent. E is also the midpoint of segment AC. And I cannot assume that these diagonals are congruent to each other. But E is the midpoint of segment AC. What does that mean? That means that this segment is congruent to this segment. Okay? So two tick marks there and two tick marks there. You really, if you understand if you understand or memorize these properties of a parallelogram, then we can go ahead and move on to rectangle, rhombi, and squares because those three things are special types of parallelograms. That means it has all these properties here. And before I do that, I'm so sorry. Before I do that, if you want to verify whether or not, if you're calculating, if you're, if you're doing some sort of calculations here, proving whether or not something's a parallelogram, you need to check the slopes if these slopes are the same and you use that formula you remember n equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 that is what you need to do to verify whether or not something is a parallelogram okay you calculate the slopes of opposite sides and see if you get two pairs of equal slopes okay that's how you that's how you show or calculate something as a parallelogram okay hopefully that makes sense Anyways, uh, to uh, make sure that we're on the same track here, parallelogram, remember, has all these properties. You got special types of parallelograms. Rectangle, so that should be rectangles, rhombi, and squares. Sorry, those are not plural, I, or I could say rectangle, rhombus, or square, my bad. But um, you, you have to understand that from here, you get to these things. Let's start with a rectangle. So rectangle, properties, it has all those things that we've talked about all of these things that we've talked about uh these are properties of a parallelogram okay then the reason why this rectangle or this figure is so special is because okay one it has all the properties of a parallelogram two the diagonals are congruent okay the diagonals are congruent and then um, we have those four right angles there. So that's a rectangle, okay? So let's recap. You have a rectangle. It's a special type of parallelogram. Um, opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are congruent. Um, opposite angles are congruent. The diagonals do bisect each other at a midpoint so that means that this segment here and this segment here are congruent and know that these same diagonals are congruent. So I put three tick marks here and three tick marks there, okay? And then 
with a rectangle you have these four right angles and I think no I do know that it is important that you understand the isosceles triangle theorem if two sides of a triangle are congruent then the angles opposite to each other are congruent so you can see that this try or not this triangle this rectangle is actually composed of like four triangles right and if I were to look at this triangle here on its own you can see that those two sides are congruent so that triangle there is isosceles so if those two sides are congruent, then the angles opposite to each other are congruent. So if this is 20, and you can see that this is an isosceles triangle, then you know for sure that this angle has to be 20, okay? Because you are using the isosceles triangle theorem. So please make sure that you understand that. Please, please, please make sure that you understand that. Uh, verification, if the figure is parallelogram, so if it's already parallelogram from the start, in order for you to determine something as a rectangle, make sure that you calculate the slopes of the diagonals to see if they are not perpendicular. Not, 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 not perpendicular. Okay? If they are not per perpendicular, go ahead and put the cherry on top and ensure that the, 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 the distance of the diagonals are equal to each other. Okay, Because remember, um, these diagonals here, they are not perpendicular, but if the diagonals are congruent, then it's a rectangle, okay? So that's how you verify, that's how you calculate uh, or prove something that is a rectangle. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at number three, a rhombus. So a rhombus is another special type of parallelogram, okay? It has um, these properties that we talked about at the beginning. These are properties of a parallelogram. Now, the thing about a rhombus, the reason why it's so special is because the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. They intersect at a 90 degree angle, unlike a rectangle. And with a rhombus, these sides here are congruent, okay? So this side, this side, this side, this side, they are equal to each other, they are congruent. So that's why it's a rhombus, okay? So I think we're getting the gist of what a parallelogram is and how we can ladder from, you know, beginning to, you know, hopefully the end on what, you know, what parallelograms do and what special type of parallelograms are, okay? So again, a rhombus has all those properties of parallel parallelogram that we talked about right at the beginning, okay? And the reason why it's so special, because the diagonals are perpendicular, they intersect at 90 degrees, and those sides are congruent. To verify uh, if something is a rhombus, well, first of all, you have to determine whether it's a parallelogram. If it says it's a parallelogram from the start, you don't need to calculate the slope. It's already stated that it's a parallelogram. Then you move forward and you calculate the slopes of the diagonals to see if they intersect at 90 degrees, or in other words, if they are perpendicular. Remember, perpendicular. I always say, if you compare the two slopes, opposite sign, flip the fraction, okay? Then what you gotta do, if the if the diagonals are perpendicular, using that slope formula, then you, what you wanna go ahead and do is calculate whether or not the diagonals are not equal, and you use the distance formula for that one, okay? Hopefully this makes sense. Um, now, I'm gonna move on to a square. This is the last special type of parallelogram. One more time. A square is a special type of parallelogram. It has all those properties of a parallelogram. The opposite sides parallel, opposite sides congruent, opposite angles are congruent. Um, the diagonals bisect each other at a midpoint. Yes, they do. But here I get into this territory. And the reason why I showed the square last of the three special types of parallelograms, it's because a square is essentially, well one, it's a parallelogram, two, it is a rhombus and a rectangle combined, okay? So the diagonals are congruent, that came directly from the rectangle property, the diagonals are congruent, okay? So that means that if I have these diagonals, they intersect at a midpoint, that means that this segment here and this segment here are congruent, but how many tick marks do I put here and here? Well, I know for sure that the diagonals are congruent. So I put actually one here and one here. So this, 
uh, let me go ahead and say this came directly from the rectangle property. I'm gonna call it rect. Uh, the diagonals here are perpendicular. They intersect at a 90 degree angle, okay? Where did that come from? Well, that came directly from a rhombus. So if I go back, I'm like, okay, diagonals are perpendicular for a rhombus. Diagonals are perpendicular uh, for a rhombus. That is the same case with the square. Diagonals are perpendicular on a square because that came directly from a rhombus, the properties of rhom uh, rhombi. Uh, four angles are right, so that came directly from the rectangle. And then we have four congruent sides that came directly from the rhombus. Okay, remember with the rhombus, all sides are congruent. With the square, all sides are congruent. Okay, so it's coming from these properties. Okay, first of all, remember with the square, it came directly from a parallelogram. Two, it came directly from a rhombus. And three, it came directly from a rectangle. So if you combine everything, you got yourself a square. Okay? So, um, verification. If the figure is a parallelogram right from the beginning, make sure you calculate the slopes of the diagonals. Okay? You're using m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you want to see whether or not they intersect at a 90 degree angle. They are perpendicular, okay? You see uh, if the slopes are perpendicular, opposite sign flip fraction, great. It is either a square or a rhombus. Then you're gonna do the cherry on top. You're gonna do one more step. You're gonna calculate whether or not the diagonals are congruent using the distance formula, okay? So that's your verification. Moving on, now we're no longer on that special type of parallelogram. We're gonna move on to trapezoids. And a trapezoid, by definition, has one pair of parallel sides, okay? We call the parallel sides the bases, and then the non-parallel sides the legs. In the mid-segment, connect the legs together. Know this formula, mid-segment equals one half times the quantity base one plus base two. So here's base one, that's one of the parallel sides, and then this is base, base two. That is the other uh, parallel side. So we say that the mid segment is equal to one half of this plus this, okay? So that's how you calculate the mid segment. Isosceles trapezoid properties. Well, it's a trapezoid, it has one, pair of opposite sides make sure that um you can see these parallel lines here and it has one pair of um i would say that the legs really really i want to make sure this is clear enough the legs are congruent okay so those are the non-parallel sides so non-parallel sides so uh, here I have these uh, opposite sides parallel. We call these the bases and the non-parallel sides here are the legs. And if those things are congruent, so this has the same number of tick marks as this, you got an isosceles trapezoid, okay? And, um, you know, one more thing. The diagonals of a trapezoid are congruent. The diagonals of a trapezoid are congruent. And then I think we want to put one more thing here. Um, base angles are congruent. Okay, as you can see, I have one arc here, one arc here, one arc here. And this is the base. We call these things the base angles. The base angles are congruent. I like to look from left to right. Those angles there are congruent, it has one arc each. And then I look at the top. This is also the base, and these are what we call base angles as well. And you can see that those two uh, angles are congruent by the number of tick marks there, okay? So if this, let's just, Real quickly, if this is six, this is six, and if this is three, that's three. I'm talking about degrees, like in terms of angle. Well, that doesn't make sense, right? Uh, really, really doesn't make sense. Um, Cause they have to add up to 360, right? Um, let's see, 100, if that's 100, and this is 100, and then Uh, this is 80 and this is 80. There you go. That should add up to 360, right? Yeah, so uh, uh, 
base angles are congruent. So if this is 80, then this has to be 80, and if this is 100, this has to be 100. Okay, the base angles are congruent. Please make sure that you understand that. Or if I want to, I'll draw a picture so you can see. This only applies, this only applies, yeah, you can see there's a one arc here and one arc, or not one arc, one tick mark there and one tick mark. That only applies to an isosceles trapezoid. And to prove something, it's uh, it, to verify, you need to calculate the slopes of the top and bottom and see if they are parallel. And you need to calculate the legs, the, I mean the slopes of the legs to see if they're not parallel. Once you have all four slopes shown, and you can see that, oh, you got one pair of parallel sides and one pair of non-parallel sides, move on and check the diagonals whether or not they're congruent okay because that's one of our properties diagonals congruent use the distance formula for that one um a kite properties of a kite well diagonals are perpendicular the diagonals are perpendicular they intersect at 90 degree angles um the um with a kite two pairs of consecutive congruent sides okay so when I mean by consecutive, I mean next to. So you can see that this side here and this side here are next to each other. Those are congruent on a kite. And then this side here and this side here are next to each other. They are congruent on a kite. And then remember about the angles. I like to say that the head and the tail. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't put arcs here. We say that the head and the tail are not congruent. And then we say that the wings are. Okay, so those two things are congruent and sometimes with kites we love to use the Pythagorean theorem and such uh, with this type of problem okay so be on the lookout for that all right speaking of Pythagorean theorem remember the Pythagorean theorem states that the square of the longest side of a right angle triangle called the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other side so we use a squared plus b squared equals c squared if we see a right triangle. The hypotenuse, one more time, the hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. It's the longest side of the of the right triangle, and we call that C. And then the other, other um, sides, we use A and B, okay? So, this was a quick recap. Hopefully you were able to catch everything. Make sure that you look at your notes and such. And if you have to, watch this video again. Make sure that you understand those properties. Remember, start from the beginning and work your way up top like a ladder. We're scaffolding, know what a parallelogram is, then move on to special type of parallelograms, and then the things that are completely irrelevant, but you know, you have to know, such as uh, uh, trapezoids, isosceles trapezoids, and um, kites, okay? So, like I said in my previous video, I don't remember which video, but golly, good luck with your studies. See you later.